He's not just a grocery guy. He's a grocery guru. He's Phil Lampert. He joins us now. Actually, he lives in a grocery store. He lives in the produce section because, you know, when you get the produce spritzer coming on, it's like a it's shower. It is because you wouldn't want to leave live in the freezer section. No, Too cold. Very chilly. Yeah. Plenty of food. Uh, Phil Lampert, where do we follow you with the, the uh, uh-huh. supermarket guru? Hmm. Let me try again. Phil? I'm here. Hi, oh, Phil. There you are. <laughs> I, I, I was just shivering from being in the produce department. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where, that's showery. Where, where, do we, where do we keep up with you? How do we know what you're talking about and what you're doing every day? Uh, supermarketguru.com. Supermarketguru.com. All right. Right out of the gate. Grocery prices are up and they continue to go up. They're never going to level off to where we'd like them to be. But is there any end in sight? Uh, not really. Um, so, so the good news is that they've leveled off. But again, keep in mind that about 95% of all the products that are in a supermarket have to do with agriculture. They come out of the ground. And the biggest problem that we've got is climate change. So we take a look at the weather conditions globally, whether it's rains or storms or fires. Uh, you know, that affects the price of our foods. Then on top of that, we put the cost of labor. The good news is that we've had the minimum wage go up here in California for fast food workers, but we're seeing minimum wages go up around the country. Um, So as a result, our input costs are higher. So the good news is that, you know, food prices have leveled off. But to your point, they're never going to go down. That's unfortunate. I do love to spend time at the grocery store just like you, Phil. And when we're navigating the grocery store from a health perspective, we say, oh, shop the perimeter of the store, buy all the healthy foods. Well, those healthy foods are super, super expensive. I bring it home and my husband goes, why did you spend this much money on this? You could have just made it. Um, where, how do we navigate? Where can we go in that store to not spend all the money? Well, To be honest with you, I think that today, you know, throughout the entire store, there are healthier foods, even in that center part of the store. What we need to do is we need to read labels. We need to read the nutritional information. We need to read the ingredients. And unfortunately, today, because of greedflation, with all these food companies really ripping us off, uh, what we've got to do is we've got to look at the net weight, uh, because we have everything from Doritos taking eight chips out of the bag Mm -hmm. to Gatorade taking ounces out to cereal companies taking, again, more product out of their package, even though the package is the same size. Um, So we have to be more alert than ever before. And when it comes to healthy foods, what we've got to understand is the closest to, you know, nature that we can, the least processed foods, uh, the better they are. You know, the ultra processed foods that have, you know, 30, 40 ingredients to them, that's not going to do our bodies any good. Um, All right, so there are no deep, dark secrets that only you know that the rest of us don't know. I don't know how a family of four makes it. A family of four, you know, even double income, you know, median income is probably what for a family of four? 100 grand? The household income, 100 grand? Me? No, not even close. Oh, it's less than that. So how are they doing it? It's got to be less. I mean, they living on beefaroni? What are they doing? Well, that's the problem. Uh, So, you know, people who are on either SNAP programs or limited incomes, what they're doing is they're shopping around. They're going to dollar stores. They're going to grocery outlets. They're going to Aldi. They're, They're really just you know, being really smart about how they're using their budget um, on food. And the sad thing is that when it comes to nutrients, um, they have to rely, you know, on different proteins. So, for example, with that segment of the population, eggs are their primary Mm -hmm. source of protein because even when eggs, you know, as as they did a while ago and they're going to go back up, you know, to five, six, seven dollars a dozen uh, because of bird flu. Um, that's their primary source of, of protein. Mm-hmm. Well, and Phil, on that note, because it seems so, family of four right here, two kids, wife, dog. Yeah. Uh, just the, those basics, though, is what is kind of killing the budget. Eggs, milk, bread, the basic, I mean, proteins. Chicken used to be cheap. You could find it on sale 
79 cents a pound sometimes. Now, I mean, boneless. Now you got to know a guy. You got to know a guy. got to know a guy. You got to have your own. I got a chicken guy. I got to know a guy. I mean, what's what's the alternative? Uh, or, or are you just, I mean, I'm kind of screwed, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, um, we, we are screwed. There's, there's no question about it. Um, what, what we really have to do is understand that, number one, 40% of all of our food is wasted. Mm. So what, what people need to understand is, number one, you want to save money? Don't waste food. Um, and that's everything from leftovers or, you know, the occasional time that you go out bring leftovers home, uh, make sure that you're using up what's in your refrigerator and your freezer and your cupboards. Um, don't overbuy. You know, what a lot of people do is when they get into the supermarket, they see, you know, cool stuff and they buy it and it sits in their cupboard forever and they just never wind up using it. So, you know, what, what we need to understand is first, don't overbuy. Second, always shop with a shopping list. Make sure you know that before you go shopping, you take a look in your cupboards, um, in your refrigerator, in your freezer. You know, write write your shopping list based on that, um, and that's probably the easiest way to save money. Well, Phil, you know who doesn't care about spending money at the grocery stores are Gen Zers and Millennials. They don't care about going out to eat anymore. They don't want any beauty products. They just want to eat food. They want to eat food, but they're smart because they're going to Aldi. If you if you take a look at you know Aldi's customer base, it's that generation uh, because what they want is they want value and they want quality. Uh, and you know Aldi about ninety five percent of what's in their stores is all their own brand, and you know they've got exceptional quality. And what they do is they're really an efficient operation. So you know you go into a traditional super market and you'll see about a hundred different bottles of olive oil. In Aldi, you've got a general purpose olive oil, you've got an organic one, you've got an extra virgin one, and then you've got a high-end imported one from Italy. That's it. So, you know, they don't have to carry the kind of inventory that a supermarket that has 40,000, 50,000 products have, and as a result, they're able to pass on those savings to us. It's uh, Phil Lembert, the Supermarket Guru. Go to supermarketguru.com. You'll see a lot of inside baseball, too, there. You get a lot of grocery news there. It will keep you ahead of the game. And if you're an investor, of course, that's interesting. But also, it can tell you places you, you're going to be ahead of the game and, you know, where you're going to save money next week. So get all the info. Phil, it's great work, as always. Thank you so much. Thanks, Have a good Phil. day. That's Appreciate Phil Lembert. Me. 847 traffic update. Got the leftovers still to come. And I'm breaking my own rule. I'm bringing up a story we did earlier. Oh, Mm -hmm. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody didn't catch it earlier.